one from wherever you're watching today's class. I'm your lecturer, Kennedy Oedaina. I'll be taking you through a topic known as a model town board. When you're discussing this topic, at the end of the class, you're supposed to define what a model town board is, what are its features, what are the rules of a model town board, and you should be able to drive the, our toy car from point A to point B from a three-lane road and a four-lane road. I hope you are ready as we start. We are going to start with the definition of a model town board. What is a model town board? A model town board, you can define it using two ways. One, it's an example of a road network on a board. A more detailed definition, you can put it as a simplified representation used to explain the types of road found in our major towns, that is in Kenya and in East Africa. The next thing you're going to look at is the rules of a model town board. These rules are applicable where we are driving our toy cars from point A up to point B. If you are given a question and you're told drive this car from point A to point B, always look for the shortest route and the most correct without using the parking. That is our rule number one. Use the shortest and the most correct route without using parking. If you, are, if you have already exhausted the shortest route and the most correct, now you, can be able, you should look for the longest route and the most correct, again without using parking. That is our second rule. And lastly, parking should be your last option. That is our third rule. Next thing we are going to look at is what makes up, what composes this model town board. These are the features that make up this model town board. We have around 11 features. We are going to look at them one by one, but first we are going to list them. We have a one-way traffic road, a two-way traffic road, a roundabout, parking zones are also found on the model town board. We have yellow cabs, we have a pedestrian crossing. We also have a stop sign on the model town board, a giveaway sign, exit from main road, exit from controlled parking zone, and lastly, we have the road markings. These are the arrow direction, the reflectors, and the delta marks. In our next session, we are going to look at, now I want us to look at each feature individually. First, we are going to start with a one-way traffic road. A one-way traffic road is also known as a dual carriageway. As you can see in our screen, we have an, how a one-way traffic road looks like. I hope now you can be able to relate from the practical scenarios out there, the roads that you've been to and looks like this road. These are a one-way traffic road. What is a one-way traffic road? This is a road where all traffic move on one direction. And this road, this road is divided using white continuous or white broken lines. The function of these lines, when you're in one, our, a white continuous line, this means that you're not supposed to change your lanes or overtake someone in that particular point. A white broken line or a dotted line means now if it is safe to do so, you can, you are, you, can, you are allowed to change load, to change your lanes or overtake someone. Still, we have things we call the lands or the fields. These are the green parts at the edges of the round of the model town board. When we are, we are in our section of the model town board, I'm going to show you the lands or the, the green fields. Those yellow markings at the edges of the green fields, they are called the yellow curves. At this particular point, you are, you are told you're not supposed to overtake, park, you're not supposed to wait or to stop. Between our one-way traffic roads, we have things we call the central reserves or the pavements or the road reserves. The, sorry, the central reserves or the pavements. These are the things that, anything that separates our one-way traffic road, it's called a central reserve. On this central reserve, we are going to see our next feature called, our feature called a U-turn. Next, we go to a two-way traffic road. This, this is also known as a single carriage. As you can see on our screen, we have an example of a two-way traffic road whereby on this road, vehicles are moving in opposite direction. If you remember when we were looking at the one-way traffic road, that road was divided using white lines. But in a two-way traffic road, the road is divided using yellow lines. That is our definition of a two-way traffic road, where vehicles are moving in opposite direction, whereby we have the yellow lines. But you can find yellow continuous lines or yellow broken lines or dotted lines. 
In a yellow continuous line, you're not supposed to change lane. You have to stick to your lane. But in a yellow broken line, if it is safe or the road ahead is clear, you can overtake. Our next feature, we are going to look at a pedestrian crossing. As you can see, that is our pedestrian crossing. What is a pedestrian crossing? Pedestrian crossing is a safe and marked area on the road where the drivers need to slow down and stop so as to be able to enable pedestrians to cross from one side of the road to another. It is, sorry, it is an offense to, step, to stop at a pedestrian crossing, you as a driver. That area should only be left for the safe crossage of pedestrians from one point to another. Next, we have a roundabout. That is a roundabout, as you can see clearly from our screen. What is a roundabout? This is a meeting point of traffic where more than two roads meet at a point. Again, you can see the function of the roundabout. Do we really need a roundabout? Yes, we do. At this, where these roads are meeting at a point. The function of the roundabout is facilitate the movement of vehicles into different direction without causing any obstruction or collision. Next thing you are going to look at is the rules of the roundabout. A roundabout has its rules, which is an offense again to go against them. One, you're not supposed to stop in a roundabout. The second thing, you're not supposed to change lanes in a roundabout. Third thing, no parking, completely no parking in a roundabout. You are not supposed to overtake someone in a roundabout. Again, and lastly, you can, you're not allowed to wait in a roundabout. Those are five rules of the roundabout. A roundabout is divided into three parts. Most of us think that the roundabout is only the innermost lane. No, a roundabout is, has three parts. We are going to look at them one after the other. The green part at the center of the roundabout that is, allows, that is used to control the movement of vehicles is called the traffic island. In our model town board, you are at the roundabout at the center, you're going to see that land, that land must left there. That is what we call the traffic island and it, it, our first part of the roundabout. The innermost lane, this is a lane that allows you to go into all directions. The last lane, in our model town board, we have four lanes in a roundabout. The last lane in a roundabout is what we term as the innermost lane. It is a special lane, it's the only lane that can take you into all the directions. Our lane number four is our second part, the innermost lane. Then you have the space lanes, our third part in the roundabout. These are lanes number one, two, and three. These are called the spaces or the space lanes. Another thing you're supposed to note in a roundabout, our lanes are counted from the outermost to the innermost. So the outermost lane, that is, should be our lane number one. That's supposed to be our lane number one. The second lane after our outermost lane, that is our lane number two, Lane number three will be our third lane, and then the innermost lane will be lane number four. So three things to remember. The roundabout has three parts. One, traffic island. Two, the innermost lane. In our, in our model town board, that is our lane number four. And three, the space lanes or the spaces. Those are lane number one, two, and three. I want us to look at the common mistakes we usually make or drivers usually make when approaching the roundabout. We have four mistakes. One of them is approaching the roundabout in the wrong lane. What this does, you'll be tempted to make a mistake when you enter the roundabout if you did not approach the roundabout using the right lane. The right lane, when you are moving our vehicle from, when we are entering our roundabout from the four lane road and the three lane road, we are going to see how you're supposed to, which lane takes you to where, which lane takes you to which direction. The other thing, the other mistake that we, drivers usually do is leaving or exiting the roundabout in the wrong lane. When you are doing the practical part of the model town board, we are going to see, we are going to explain to detail how this happens. People tend to change lanes on the roundabout. That is another common mistake that you're not supposed to do. You're supposed to stick to your lane until you exit in the roundabout. And lastly, we have the incorrect observation of the traffic lights. Observing the traffic lights from the wrong direction. Our model town board has two types of parking. These two types of parking are one, angle parking, which is also known as an ample parking or the controlled parking zone. Two, we have the flash, also known as a parallel parking or the uncontrolled parking. We start with angle parking. In angle parking, vehicles flow, follow in one direction. It's like we have a one-way traffic in an angle parking. But don't put that in mind. In, a, in angle parking, again, I'm going to show you the movement, how you're supposed to enter the angle parking. Vehicles are only flow in one direction, whereby we have entrance and exit at both sides. That means if you, your entrance was at point A, your exit should be at point B. You're not supposed to 
exit at the same side or place that you your entrance was. We are going to look at the rules of angle parking. The angle parking is only meant for small cars only, or the saloon cars, or vehicles which fall under class B, whether it's B light vehicle or B automatic light vehicle. Vehicles like a Vitz, a Probox, those are the only vehicles that, any vehicle that falls under class B. That is how our angle parking looks like. The other rule of angle parking is park from the farthest end. Again, these are going to see it clearly when you're moving those our vehicles on the model town boat. Park by forward gear. That is our third rule of a model of, a, of an angle parking. We are going to see how you're supposed to do this. We're supposed to leave or exit by the reverse gear. And again, it has an entrance and exit from both sides. We said you have two types of parking on the model town boat. We have finished with the angle parking. Now I want us to look at the flash parking. That is how our flash parking looks like. This type of parking is found on the left hand side of the road in your direction of travel, in the direction of travel of the vehicle. I want us to look at the rules of flash parking zone. In angle parking, we only parked saloon cars or vehicles that fall under category class B. But now in flash parking, we park all types of vehicles except trailers and tractors. Meaning we can park our mini minivan there, our lorries there, as opposed to in angle parking. We have an entry, but you must leave space for the exit. Into details, I'll show you when we are doing the practical part in the model town board. The only similarity between angle parking and the flash parking zone is parking from the farthest end. So uh, if you are asked, give the similarity or things that happen both in angle and flash parking, this is what you should give park from the farthest end. All the others are differences. We park by reverse gear in flash parking. I hope you remember in angle parking, we park by the forward gear. In flash parking, we, are, we leave or we exit using the forward gear. I hope you remember again, in angle parking, we exited using the reverse gear. Our next feature that you're going to look at is a stop sign, a white continuous line eh, across the road. That should be our stop sign. It is a continuous line across the road where traffic or vehicles are required to stop and look right, left, and if it is safe to do so, now they can cross the road. Do not confuse a, st a stop sign on the model town board with the white continuous line that we saw on the on one-way traffic road. A stop sign is across the road. We have another sign called a giveaway sign or the yield sign. It's usually a white broken line across the road. We have several giveaway signs which we are going to see on the model town board when we reach the practical part. That is our giveaway sign. Yes, a dotted line across the road at which vehicles are required to slow down or stop if necessary and then proceed if it's safe. I hope we are together up to that point. The next thing I want to look at, I want us to look at is how you're supposed to enter the roundabout from a four lane road or a three lane road. The practical part of a model town board. We are going to see, we are going to start with a four lane road when approaching a roundabout. There's a certain system that we're supposed to follow as opposed to when you are driving in a three lane road. What is a major road? A major road is a road which has more than three lanes. That is the system you're supposed to follow. Two is to one, is to two, is to four. What this means, our first two represents the number of options that we have in lane one. Next we have one. One represents the number of options that we have in lane two. Next we have another two. This represents the number of options you have in lane three. By options, I mean the ways that you're supposed to go if you approach the, if you approach the roundabout using that specific lane. And lastly, our lane number four enters the inner Muslim. It can take you into all directions. The four directions in the model town board has four options. We start with lane number one. Lane number one, from our system, we saw it has two options. The first option, you are supposed to stay on lane one, then go straight. This does not mean that you just go straight. It means first you are in lane number one. At the roundabout, enter lane number one. When you're exiting, exit using lane number one. That is our first option in lane number one. Second option, you have to turn to your immediate left. If you do any other thing, if you go into any other direction as opposed to the two directions that we have seen, either you go straight or you turn to your left. 
you will be making a mistake. That is, if you are in lane number one. We go to lane number two from our system. We saw that lane number two has only one option. The, this only option is going straight. How do we go straight? You are in lane number two. You are supposed to enter lane number two in the roundabout. Use that lane until you exit at lane number two. If you're in a four lane road and you approach the roundabout is in lane number two and go into any other direction as opposed to going straight, you'll be making a mistake. Our lane number three from our system, we saw it has two options. The first option is to go straight. That is how, why we have three, three, three. Three, three, three again means you're in lane number three, at the roundabout, enter lane number three. When you're exiting, exit, you see in the same lane. That is lane number three. If you will not go straight and you're in lane number three, you're supposed to turn to your right. Here, we are exiting at lane number two when you turn to your right. Why? When you're at the model town board, we are going to see that if you go to your right and you're in a four lane road, you'll be exiting to a minor road. Remember from our definition of a major road, we said, a major road is a road which has more than three lanes. In our case, we are using a four-lane road. But now, since you'll be exiting in a minor road, since you'll be exiting in a minor road, I'll give you the definition. A minor road, it's a road which has three or less lanes. So, if you look at our minor road in a model town board, it has three lanes. Our major road has four lanes. We have a deficit of one lane in a minor road. So, to avoid that confusion or collision when you're exiting, Vehicles in lane number three, when you are, they are doing their second option, that is turn right, they are supposed to exit at lane number two. We are going to see how vehicles in lane number four are supposed to exit the roundabout if they are exiting in a minor road. Then you have our lane number four, which has four options. Our first option, we are supposed to turn right at an angle of 90 degrees. Remember, our lane number four in the roundabout is the innermost lane. We say this lane can take you into all the directions. For easy understanding, just since the degrees when you are in lane number four, our first degree is 90 degrees. We have 443, meaning we are in a major road and when we do a 90 degree turn, we are going to exit in a minor road. This explains why vehicles in lane number three, second option, exit at lane number two. Option two of lane number three, Option two of lane number three and option one of lane number four both go into the same direction. To avoid that confusion when both vehicles are exiting the roundabout, that is where we are minusing or less in one. Vehicles from lane number three to exit at lane number two and vehicles in lane number four to exit at lane number three. I hope from the function of the roundabout, this comes out clearly. Our second option in lane number four, you are supposed to come back at 180 degrees. You are going this way, you do a 180 degree turn, then you go back to where you came from. Here we see 444. Four, four. What does that mean? This means we are in lane number four. We are, we are in a major road. And if you do a 180 degree turn, you are going to exit to a major road. Our third option of lane number four, you are supposed to turn to your left at 270 degrees. If you look out at our system at this particular option, we have 443. Again, it means we are in a major road, a four lane road, and we are going to exit to a minor road. That is why we are less in one. Vehicles that want to go straight and they're in lane number four, they are supposed to make a complete circle. That is, you're in lane number four, make a complete circle and go and exit using lane number four. Meaning, we are in a major road and you are going to exit in a major road. I hope we are together up to that point. In our next session, I want us to look how vehicles in a minor road, a three lane road, are supposed to approach the roundabout and how they are supposed to exit. A major road, I hope you remember, it's a four lane road. A minor road is a road which has three or less lanes. In our case, our minor road has three lanes. The system of Approaching the roundabout in a three-lane road is 215. I hope you remember, in a major road, we say this 2124. This 215 represents the number of options you have in each lane. So our first two here tells us, in lane number one, we have two options. 
In lane number two, we have one option. In lane number three, we have five options. Let's look at each individual lane. Lane number one, it has two options. The first option, these are very simple lanes. Since what we did in a major road with lane number one, we are going just to repeat the same. When we are a minor road, lane number one, go straight. Up to now, I understand you, I hope you understand our abbreviations of 111. Stick to your lane in lane number one, at the roundabout, enter lane number one, then exit using the same lane. Similar to what we did in a major road, we are going, we have our second option, exactly the same. Turn to your immediate left in, a, in, a, in lane one, the second option. Lane number two, again, it does not change. Whatever we did when we were in a, in, in a major road, we are going to be the same when you're in lane number two. It only has one option, which means you go straight. How do you go straight again? Two, two, two. You're in lane number two, at the roundabout, enter lane number two, maintain that lane. Remember from our rules of a roundabout, you're not supposed to change lane. Maintain that lane until you exit at lane number two. Then you have lane number three. Students tend to complicate this lane. I, to me, it should be the simplest lane since it's a combination of lane number three and lane number four of a major road. So whatever we did in lane number three and lane number four of a major road, we are going just to repeat the same. Point to note, here, vehicles in lane number three of a minor road can either enter lane number three or lane number four of a major road. Which vehicles do, which vehicles enter lane number three or lane number four? The first and the second option are the only ones that are supposed to enter lane number three in the roundabout. Our first option is to go straight. Remember, lane number three of a major road, our first option is to go straight. That is why I've said these are very simple lanes since it's a repetition of what we did earlier. You go straight. How do you go straight? You just maintain three, three, three. Lane number three, enter lane number three in the roundabout and exit in the same lane. If you recall, when you were discussing about the four lane road, our second option of lane number three was to go, was to turn to your right. We are going to repeat the same here. Since we said this lane is a combination, lane number three of a minor road is a combination of lane number three and four of a major road. Whatever we did with option number two of lane number three of a major road, we are going to repeat the same here. You're supposed to turn right. But now here, you're not going to exit at lane number two as, as we did when you were moving from a major road. You are going to exit at lane number three since you'll see we are going to exit in a major road. In this lane, remember, we said it's a combination of lane number three and lane number four for major road. So now, our, our third option here will be our first option of lane number four. Remember, our first option of lane number four, we were turning to our right at 90 degrees it becomes our third option. Turn right. But now, you will enter lane number four as, in the roundabout, you will enter lane number four as what we did earlier in a major road, our first option. Then, you are going to exit at lane number four. Please do not confuse between option two and option number three of a three-lane road, lane three of a minor road. Both options, go in the same direction, but they use different lanes in the roundabout. Option number two, use lane number three in the roundabout and exit using lane number three. Our third option will come from lane number three of a minor road, but now we'll enter at lane number four in the roundabout and exit using lane number four. Remember the function of the roundabout, you don't need this collusion. That is why we don't want the both two options to exit in the same lane. Our fourth option, we will go back to where we came from. Come back, enter lane number four, and exit using lane number three. Again, here the degrees comes in handy. We are going to use the 180 degrees. Come back at 180 degrees. Our fifth option will be to turn left. How will we turn left? We are, three lane, we are in, a, in lane three of a minor road, at the roundabout, we will enter lane number four, do a 270 degrees turn and exit using lane number four. I hope this class was educative, you've learned, and I hope you're going to remember all these things. From what we say from a model town board, what are its rules, 
the features and the movement in a three-lane road and in a four-lane road. Thank you. See you in our next class.